all right so um, we should take a nice example of a semiconductor sensor uh, understand its application note and uh, under, so you will get a feel for how the whole uh, sensor should be laid out on your system so that a measurement is possible okay so that is our next immediate goal slowly we have to move towards system design of uh, air quality sensors so i'll point you to one uh, semiconductor sensor which is quite popular and you know that previous paper that we were looking at calibration mentioned so many sensors alpha sense was there then the sensor tech sgx uh, 4514 was mentioned and so on right so i have taken sgx uh, 4514 mix mics mix 4514 semiconductor sensor which has the capability to measure no2 as well as co okay both it can measure there are two heaters inside and uh, one heater is for measuring of no2 and the other is for keeping the system warm and then start measuring the uh, target gas of interest so let's take that as a as one example and uh, build on top of that and see what are all the things that you will have to get in into your system before you actually build a full fledged uh, system okay that's just an example and if you know um, well how to do with uh, semiconductor then it's easy also for you to prototype with a electrochemical because uh, amperometric method can be applied and uh, you put a transconductance amplifier and i think you should be able to uh, also measure uh, the uh, from output coming from a electrochemical sensor where that there it is current driven in the electrochemical and here it is change in resistance which you are measuring directly actually it's a voltage and then you find out the r value never mind so so let us point to this uh, frequently asked questions of mix sgx sensor tech gas sensors okay small little one the reason why i also chose this is also because of the fact when i showed you the pcb i showed you a very small little tiny system on board and that indeed used the sgx sensor tech so that's the also the reason why i chose it we have some experience working with it how does it work you know it well now it's metal oxide sno2 is the material and you have a heating structure is heated by a heater structure and once the chemicals are absorbed there is a change in electrical conductivity leads to change in electrical resistance analyzing the uh, modifications right analyzing the modifications of the resistance over time compared to the reference values uh, can give some information about the variable gas concentration so it's all written well here practical difficulty is what happens if the reference keeps shifting and why should the reference shift yes why not the reference can shift if the pressure there is a variation atmospheric pressure variation if humidity changes you can have change in baseline shift if temperature changes temperature pressure humidity tph as it is called the tph effect on the baseline is there significant not significant depends on manufacturer a manufacturer b c and so on but you will have to take that into consideration and your fusion equation ultimately will have to factor in how do you do that simple have a tph sensor along with existing uh, air quality sensors so you know from manufacturers data sheet for this much temperature this is the compensation that you will have to provide and as per that you compensate it in your equation same for pressure same for temperature same for humidity normally i mentioned to you about dry gas in dry gas you will find that the baseline simply shifts because all uh, so suppose you buy an no2 mix 4514 do a prototype design put it here and then you observe the some value that uh, after tuning everything you take it inside a climate chamber there you uh, you and you leave it inside that uh, climate chamber and pass dry gas in the dry gas there is only oxygen and nitrogen okay 78 and uh, 22% okay you just add these two and then you are done and no humidity at all dry gas dry air baseline shifts right you take it out it will come back and settle at some other value 
So, it is a cat and mouse gaze you will be just wondering what is actually happening uh, when you are trying to do a calibration ok. Also therefore, while it is all written here beautifully you will have to consider these effects. So, the temperature pressure and humidity effects and therefore, you have to be careful about it. This is one part ok this is one part of the story. Second part of the story is you buy sensor uh, mix 4514 sensor A you buy sensor B. Sensor A and sensor B under same circuit conditions behave differently. How will you now worry about calibrating individual sensors that is not going to work out for you right. Every single sensor you will have to calibrate somehow you have to come to some broad understanding of what uh, the variation is right only then you can do something. Therefore, they what they do is they typically take a ratio of uh, the R s and the R naught. R naught typically is the baseline resistance that is available to you and that along with the change in resistance is taken and then you take a ratio of the two. So, you define a term called sensitivity which is defined by this ratio R s minus R naught divided by R naught. You take that equation and keep that as your sensitivity parameter and then keep using that so that individual sensors need not be calibrated that is the only way you can manage and come to something useful uh, when you prototype uh, across hundreds and thousands of sensors. So, you see now why air quality has not taken off uh, monitoring with, with IoT sensors these are some issues. Air quality you cannot afford to do a mistake right PPM to PPB if you do a mistake if it is your safe values are in PPB and you measure make a measurement in PPM it is gone people are going to die. So, when it is life saving and all these critical things your system design should be perfect your system design should account for everything that manufacturers have found out in terms of problems. Moment you do that you have additional components moment you have additional components those will have to be managed power domains have to be managed circuit becomes complex circuit can fail because it can be it becomes complex right. Then you have to have very intelligent software which detects the failure of a sensor and reports and says whatever I am reading is incorrect because temperature uh, sensor has failed or pressure sensor has failed or humidity sensor has failed and so on and so forth. So, your software should be full of brains the designer who is designing the circuit should manage the power properly he has to maintain certain voltage uh, rails properly. Uh, sometimes uh, in electrochemical applications the reference electrode has to maintain a constant voltage under any circumstance because it is the reference electrode and the electrode that you measure at uh, the working electrode that actually sh tells you something about the concentration of the gas. And therefore, you must maintain superly regulated voltage for these reference electrodes in the electrochemical uh, some some of the electrochemical system. So, you read the data sheet application note thoroughly before doing any system design. I, I do not have a magic formula for you and I have done this myself and therefore, confidently I can tell you that every single point has to be understood from a overall objective of what you are trying to do ok. This is very very critical. So, read this with lot of uh, deeper understanding from what I said reference values is not so simple we already discussed this right and cross sensitivity is an issue. So, here you are the baseline resistance can vary a lot from sensor to sensor and according to measurement conditions which is why you talk about sensitivity and uh, that is relative change of sensing resistance R s against the baseline resistance R o. This allows the realization of applications with detection of gas concentration changes uh, rather than absolute measurements. How do gas sensors react to temperature? Yes, there is a problem right. You have to do compensation look here temperature sensitivity T p h temperature pressure humidity. How do gas sensors react to humidity? Yes, there is a problem they are is it significant not significant is another issue look at this example 15 ppm measured at 40 percent R h corresponds to 20 ppm ozone at 80 percent R h. 
So, you have to compensate. So, the value you read off is dependent on what is the humidity level RH level and uh, therefore, this is just an example. So, you have to ensure that uh, this is also brought into the picture. The influence of interfering gases that is cross sensitivity VOCs well that is another problem. So, you may have to do filtering right you know RC filters very well which removes unwanted frequencies uh, signal components quite like that when you want to remove a gas you have to put a filter such as activated carbon is one such filter to remove certain VOCs that you do not want to interfere when you are making a measurement of only one type of gas. So, one type of target gas is warm up required yes of course, I mentioned this to you already that uh, unless you have a heater uh, and you do some preheating and your measurements of NO2 are not valid. So, people even suggest 6 hours of continuous heating from a off the shelf you buy put it on board you put it on for 6 hours do not do nothing with it, it warms up completely then you are ready for making any measurement. Some people even suggest overnight heating 12 hours of first time, first time overnight heating and then repeat and subsequently no measurement is possible till the heater uh, warms up to the its required condition. Therefore, do not think of uh, if you are supposing you are, you are going to put this on a car and you are driving it out of a car battery moment you switch off the car ignition and everything comes down battery should still be connected to this uh, board which essentially is housing all these uh, pollution sensors and the heaters in them should be on. You may not do sensing, but you have to keep the heaters on otherwise there is no way by which you can measure anything in real time. What about the other problem of uh, response right T 90 response T 9 that is where you will pick your uh, sensors of interest. Supposing there is a sensor which says T 90 response is 100 seconds well in 100 seconds you would have gone if you are putting it on a vehicle 100 seconds you would have gone uh, quite a distance right. So, your measurement is uh, incorrect you whatever whatever you wanted to take a snapshot at one point is now uh, completely invalid by the time okay, heater is still on you switch on and then make a measurement by that time in a moving vehicle by the time you would have crossed and uh, the point at which it has sampled uh, at whatever instant is incorrect because it has not gone to T of 90 T 90 comes 100 seconds uh, later and that is another uh, signal point which is less crowded perhaps or something else and then your measurement is totally incorrect. I would choose that against some other sensor which gives you in 10 seconds even that is not a very effective if you are moving at very high speed you can do some calculations to find out at uh, what distance you would have moved if you are let us say travelling in a city at I do not know maybe 40 or 50 kilometer per hour and uh, you would have uh, gone. Uh, 100 seconds and uh, how much distance and where you would have re all that you can do a calculation. But I am saying that all this simply amounts to the fact that you will have to uh, know, uh, know use that parameter also when you are trying to buy your uh, sensors. Again going back why air quality monitoring uh, using IOT has uh, really is a challenging problem is all because of these issues. So, I am just trying to sensitize you to these things. So, that is another thing all right. So, there is a preheating thing not typically 40 milliwatt. See this is another thing air flow you cannot say I will buy this uh, sensor and I will put it in the corner of some room or I will uh, just leave it there and then let it measure uh, the uh, air quality that is not going to work. You the sensor itself wants to see a flow either a laminar flow or a turbulent flow or whatever they do not specify that but a flow is required at what rate what should be the flow rate is it uh, 1 liter per minute is it 2 liters per minute is it 0.5 liters per minute how much is it is it 3 liters per, what should be the flow right in terms of volume because when you say the liters and all that you are talking about volume. So, uh, there is again a lot of things people keep talking about and again from my experience I can tell you any flow in the range of 0.5 liters per minute to 1 liter per minute is considered to be good ok. So, you will have to look at uh, sucking the air using a pump or something and then allowing that uh, pump to 
bombard that air that you have sucked at a regulated rate of uh, some 0.5 or 1 liter per minute. Only then the measurement is right. So, you see effects of TPH, effect of flow and other problem is poisoning. Poisoning of the sensor means if it is going under uh, you know lot of toxic uh, materials come and bombard it the sensitive layer goes away then it is then again you have a problem. So, you may have to apply several filtering mechanisms and we discussed that uh, VOCs and all that means you need a different type of filters and uh, you know polluting gases um, is another issue. So, it is a very complex thing if you want to do a design of an air quality yes, you have to keep these things in mind. So, that is another thing uh, how often is calibration required well you see this is another thing every vendors claims that uh, if it is semiconductor sensor once you do a calibration you can be done with and all that. So, that is really not the case the problem is that if you have a heater based uh, system like the NO2 uh, the mix 4514 the heater uh, it, it should be on continuously otherwise you cannot as I said make a measurement may be in the night when you are uh, switching off the complete car and it is I mean I am assuming that all these sensors are mounted inside a car because it is doing a tailpipe uh, monitoring as well as ambient uh, monitoring okay, for both I am just assuming that you are making measurements as you go along in your path to your office or home or marketing or any mall or uh, any shopping complexes and so on. So, you are just continuously ca you know gathering data because you have an IoT box which is now quite uh, reasonably priced and uh, very accurate uh, a dream right you you uh, and then that is what you can put everywhere inside your homes inside your cars inside the, the bus where you sit for your travel or your train wherever you go and then you are saying that okay here is a good quality air i am breathing this is not so good this is not so good so on and so forth you should not get paranoid about it but at the same time you should be aware that uh, sometimes it's not good for humans to breathe uh, some toxic gases Anyway, that apart. So, calibration is an issue, and um, uh, you can say roughly that uh, one two months, uh, irrespective of whether it's electrochemical or uh, the uh, semiconductor, you don't need to worry. But I think every six three months or so, you have to keep calibrating it. Baseline drifts will be there. Keep adjusting them, and then move on from there. So, therefore, that's a really an issue. Then, how stable is the semiconductor gas sensor with time? Well, I did mention to you about the heaters problem once the heater comes down the uh, system is not good enough for making a proper measurement because reactions do cannot take place as efficiently as they should at that given temperature. So, if your uh, heater is not functioning well reactions are not happening at all perhaps and therefore, uh, your ability to detect a target gas also comes down. So, there are issues of that nature you have to go keep checking that and then uh, accordingly adjust the current as and when the r values keep dropping no if there is no drift okay so something like 6000 hours is okay and after that it will drop uh, the heater resistance will increase so it will uh, moment it he increases heater resistance increases the current drawn comes down and then the the temperature it can attain is also reduced and uh, therefore, you can have an impact right all these issues are there. Now, what about the uh, spread of R naught and uh, S the current measurement under a target gas R naught as I said is their baseline value. A factor of 5 in production spread is typical the sensitivity is typically spread over a factor of 2 to 8 depending on the target gas this data comes from lab measurements and all that. Uh, for example, in automotive applications the gas sensors are set to react to a broad range of gases in this case the tolerance of sensitivity is reduced by a factor of 2 or 3 instead of 8. So, you will have to look at this also as an important parameter all right. How to ma uh, avoid permanent damage to sensors well you have to be uh, take care of over voltage you have to take care of ESD and uh, you should do only wave soldering of the sensor on the board you should not be exposed to high concentrations of any organic solvents heater voltages should be well within the range 
you should not apply DC DC converter output for uh, heating voltage it should not be a switched power supply output rather it should be a DC clean DC voltage that is being applied to these heaters. The sensor should be packed so that it is filtered against uh, liquid water and dust projections. Degassing is another problem uh, of plastic material so you have to avoid presence of uh, VOC compounds okay all that is a very important thing. Can they be poisoned yes sure they can be poisoned. So, you as I mentioned to you that you have to take care of this poisoning. So, this part of the circuit here you can see this part here is essentially heater. So, do not break your head so much about it R H R D this 5 volts to ground heater is there R S is what of is your, is your interest R naught is the baseline resistance value R S is the value of resistance that you measured due to target gas. And that is what he mentions here that this is what you want to actually measure over voltages have to be ensured that you do not uh, apply higher voltages and no switching voltages that I also mentioned there. Now, R s is what you get and that you can give it to an ADC okay. and you could essentially uh, apply a bank of resistors for your uh, resolution requirements. Okay you can have this kind of a range of values 2 k to 1 meg for you to get a uh, different uh, steps when you do your ADC measurements depends. So, therefore, mostly on your resolution that you want to measure you have to. So, this is discussion on uh, whether in order to save uh, energy can we do pulsed power and this discussion essentially is about that. Thank you very much.